But it was not inside the story, they highlighted it somewhere big in the middle. 12.1 billion shillings a month. That I wanted to call the editor as a reminder. The general sphere of figures is not good. When you deal with clinical research, find out the sample. How many, the sample size, how many people are involved. If they were five, and you are to put a story, and you say five people who are, you may better off sometimes using percentage. If, if three of them, you know, maybe were positive, you could say 60% of them, people who are tested and bring that five out of communication. If you, if you put five, some people might think, what is this? To a scientist, it may be significant, but to the public, and then you don't put people in a house, 3.5 people, round it to three or four, you don't need that, that kind of thing. So, figures can give you lots and lots of stories. You can catch up with very many things. Not just the sample size, how it was even selected, how many women were there, how many children were there. I'm told when they were doing the human genome, the genes, they made sure that the genes came from different, the, the samples came from different people. So it was not just, as you said, that was a human genome for Americans, white. It was there. So to make sure that human species are the same. So the, the sample size and sampling, how they choose which we are, who, who they were dealing with, is not very hard maths, but uh, there are lots of stories that journalists lose because they see figures. Don't use too many of them. Sit down and find out what is significant. Don't go and bother professor now. Which figure should I use out of this? You're, if you are a science journalist, just be patient a bit and learn whether something will appear real good if it is in form of percentage or in the form of numbers. That kind of thing. If something is the difference for 0.01%, you want to put that in a, it's not important. But if it is 0.01% of a billion people, or two, 10 billion people, or something like that, it will turn out to be probably 1.2 million people. You would rather go with 1.2 million people who are affected instead of 0.00% of the Chinese population. So do not be afraid of figures and just use them imaginatively as much as we are in the business of using words. The figures can generate for you very, very good stories. So networking, media association, sometimes you can, I always ask Christina something if I want to know something about South Africa. Uh, although journalists are not supposed to make news, but they can give you background information so you know what's going on. And um, when you come to enter the vaccine research, you will find out that if you do a good job, Professor Jao Cordina Chol, they will be inviting you to their workshops and you will meet others. I've had the opportunity to meet the researchers from South Africa, and the meeting, but as a journalist, you like them. So when somebody is talking about them, you know them, you know what they are saying. And so, it is not just going to cover the minister when you have a workshop on most of the science issues. You don't carry the minister's speech and run away. If you are a science journalist, you wait for the presentations. That's where your story is. That's where your brain lies. You are better off knowing who wrote the speech for the minister. It could be a scientist or a health expert or anything. So do not run away because the minister. I know the news, the news room needs the minister. But somewhere, somewhere you will miss a big story, big, big sound story that can keep you going. If there are workshops, stay during the technical presentation. In the 80s, they would throw you away. In the early 80s, mm -hmm. they would say, we don't allow journalists to put our papers. Some of them have not published, and when you publish it, they really public domain. But they also went to publish in the journals. Some of them, can, 10 years later, some of them they are not published. But there are journals nowadays which you can go to local journals. You don't have to run to Lancet every time. If there are local journal, uh, media and no, no, I mean, uh, journals, don't underrate them. You'll find very, very important stories are in there. And scientists, particularly those in the universities, they like to talk. I, I would have said this when many journalists not here. Maybe because they are teachers, they are not used to hiding information. So if you want people to give you information really in scientific work, get professors, lecturers in the university. They, they feel very well about if they can't give you information where they are experts. So those are very useful sources of information. They look everything you can. And try to do a bit of research. When uh, Professor Well claimed he had uh, his drug with a natural protease in 
inhibitor and it was a plant. We went and looked for where it claimed the plant was, you will see it somewhere where there are lots of snakes with a pistol looking for the up. Those kind of things. Then uh, you would go to his lab, there's, not, there's no equipment to analyze these things. So you have your dignity to maintain. If you went and supported a crook, your professional name and integrity is also down, the line. It involves very big people. In South Africa, the president himself was busy singing about, you know, HIV may not be, he became an expert. It is like something that goes on in every country. There are also some drug I think, some times came in South Africa. This is a phenomenon where people will tell you, I have discovered something, it is a secret, it should be hidden. It is a phenomenon that's going on. You have to remember it is science. You don't go with too much superstition or fear the big man. If you are, of course, in, in Gambia, and the man is a military dictator, you have to watch for your neck. So you don't just say you are a liar, the scientists say you are a liar, and the following day you are dead. You have to find a way of packaging your information. Maybe do a feature. Maybe find a, a way of saying, uh, do others also have drugs? Do others also, is, you know, but deep down, uh, you know, those kind of areas, if you are serious sound journalist, you'll be in a lot of trouble. It's not just political, you know, it's all in trouble. If you tell the president of Gambia, he's as good as a, a useless habit in your neck. So you have to know how to cope with some of these issues. I'll stop there and we can have uh, discussions. But you need access to information that is credible, that is reliable. So your sources of information should be credible. And then you can always have a personal library. Although you are lucky nowadays, flash disk is your library. And it's more like this. And you know, all those things. Email, fax, phones. You can send a message and be told, ah, that thing is a lie. These are things you need to compete in this section. I'll stop there and we can exchange and Christina, I know your things you want to tell me. Thank you very much.